Welcome to episode 150 of the Physique Development Podcast. <laughs> what, what an accomplishment, honestly. The fact that we have gotten to 150 episodes is amazing to me. And I thought at the beginning of our time recording the podcast that we would get here much faster. It's been, I think, three years, and we have been cranking every week uploading episodes, which makes sense. Uh, episode a week, 52 episodes, <laughs> 150 episodes. Makes sense, but in my mind, thought it was gonna come a lot faster. And the amount of improvement in the recording and just being able to talk to the camera that we've had since episode one is tremendous. And I am so excited for episode 200, 250, 300, 500, 1000. I love this podcast and I'm so glad that you've joined me here today. And the topic for today's episode is getting back in the gym after being sick. This time of year, it is very common for individuals to be sick. And I feel like I'm having this conversation every week with clients as they're coming off of having some form of illness through the winter season. And so what better time to record this episode and share with you all exactly all of my tips and my perspective of how to get back in the gym and have the best training after being sick. Before we hop into the episode, I have one favor to ask you. Two, really. Yeah, two. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. If you're listening on your favorite podcast listening platform, please subscribe to us there. And the second thing is, and I, this is the one, I really appreciate the first one, and I even greater appreciate the second, is that if you would share this with a friend that you love and you want them to get back in the gym as healthy as humanly possible after being sick, let's hop in. Being sick sucks, 100%. It is no fun and I like to change the perspective of how we're looking at being sick when we aren't able to get our day-to-day -day activities and we are stuck in bed. And, and I like to acknowledge this time frame as a break or looking at this time as a reset button. And it's a good time for us to evaluate why did we get sick? And we may not know the exact time that the germs or what have you got into our system and, and the virus got us sick, but we do have an understanding of how we were taking care of our body prior to getting sick. How were we handling stress? How was our sleep? Were we nourishing our body? Were we pushing too hard within our training and not having enough calories in place? Like really digging deep into how we were taking care of our body, I'm sure we're able to identify some different things that are like, eh, I probably could have been doing better in this category. Because I know I've talked about my clients and, and struggling with coming off being sick, but I myself, right after Christmas, got really sick for about two weeks with pneumonia. No fun, don't recommend, and I'll talk more about it as we get through the episode. But taking that time, I was able to understand leading up to that time of being sick, I was not doing everything in my power to take the best care of my body. I was not sleeping overly well. I was overly stressed. I was probably undernourishing my body, and those things were building blocks to me getting sick. And so I took the time while being sick as a reset to put myself into a better position to understand and take better care of my body because I have the knowledge to do so and also understand that I'm the only one that can change those things. I'm the only one that can make my sleep better and nourish my body more and those different things. And so I looked at my habits and changed my approach to improve those things because the common quote of, a healthy man wants a thousand things and the sick man wants one thing. And that one thing is to be healthy. And I encourage you as you are maybe coming off of being sick is remember how crappy that feels. Don't forget how sucky it is to be sick. Use that as fuel of I'm going to keep up with my water. I'm going to get all of my micronutrients in. I'm going to get all of my macronutrients in. I'm going to sleep super duper well. I'm going to mitigate my stress to my best ability and control the things that I can to make sure that I never feel like this again because because it does really suck and it feels like a setback. And with that setback, 
it's really not a setback. It's just a moment to, to reset as we've talked about. And with your fitness journey and getting in the gym and making progress in the gym, this is a lifelong journey. You're going to have ebbs and flows, peaks and valleys to your fitness journey. And this is just one of those pit stops, one of those valleys, if you will, that we've got to work our way through. And it's not going to be something where you need to beat yourself up and, and have this negative self-talk of like, oh, I, I should be better. I, blah, 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 blah. It's a moment to reset to slow down and get ourselves into a better position so that we aren't sick again in the future. According to a recent survey, 71% of women said they want to increase their glute size. And I get it because I was a part of that 71% until I got my hands on the PD glute program. It is a 16 week program, but we have the first four weeks available for free. And just in case you don't believe us, you don't have to just take my word for it. Take Nicole's word who said this 12 week program is unreal. I'm a trainer myself, but holy shit. This glute program is a mind blown emoji. I have never felt my glutes engage this much. Or take Kenzie's word for it, who said, the workout has been challenging but straightforward, which is great. I have always loved training legs, but never had a clear plan, so this has been very beneficial. I've seen a noticeable difference in my glutes and legs. It's kind of crazy how well it's been working. So head to the show notes below to access the first four weeks of the PD glute program for free and get results like Nicole, Kenzie, and the thousands of others who have said the same. Now that we've taken that time to reset and we're starting to feel better coming off of being sick, how do we navigate into the gym? And the one thing that I can really drive home is listen to your body. You're going to have some feedback that it may not be the best time for you to get back in the gym just yet. Things like feeling like your brain is, is tired, almost like you're having sluggish thoughts uh, dragging throughout the day and not feeling up to 100% yet. It's probably not a good time to, to train just yet. Reaching for a, an extra cup of coffee, trying to mitigate feeling sick. I, I, I'm laughing because I did this. <laughs> I tried to be like, no, 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 I'm not sick. I just need more caffeine. I need more stimulants to get myself hopped up to do whatever the, the thing is and probably made my situation worse. So if you're reaching for that second cup of coffee, hmm, probably not a time to get back to training. And if you feel like your short memory, your short term memory is failing you, another feedback that your central nervous system is overly taxed. And it is a, a very important tidbit to focus on resting and getting your body back to 100%. It's not a time for us to put more stress on our body to get back into the gym. So pay attention to this feedback as it is your body telling you that you are still under recovered and it's not time to get back into the gym. And you may have heard the common rule of thumb of that if you are sick above the neck, go in and train. Not a big deal. Under the neck, don't train. And this framework may work in some instances, but I can give you one right now that it certainly does not work. And for individuals who experience migraines, they're going to be like, yeah, I definitely wouldn't go and train in this scenario. If I was to be having a throbbing migraine that's making me nauseous, that makes me dizzy when I stand up, it's probably not a time for me to go and train. But if I'm following the framework of above the neck, go ahead and go train, I would be telling myself, no, I still need to go in there and train. And so you really need to listen to your body and, and be honest with yourself, like really dig deep and, and tell yourself the truth of, do you have what it takes to go in and train today? If not, what needs to be implemented to get you to that point and do that before you just force yourself to go in the gym because someone told you that you should, or you feel like because you haven't been in a week that you have to go. And there are two things that I find to be tremendously more important before you get back into the gym anyway. And so let's say that you have been sick for four to seven days, been laying on the couch, laying in bed, not having a whole lot of, of nutrients, um, doing your best to get back to 100% health. The two things that you need to be prioritizing is the quality of your nutrition as well as the quality of your sleep. And so as we have gotten out of being sick and we're regaining our appetite, 
The thing that you should be focusing on is getting your calories back to where they were prior to when you were sick. So having one to three days, I would say closer to two to three days of your consistent nutritional intake, have that under your belt before you go and train. And the same would go for your sleep. Two to maybe three days of quality sleep with a good amount of quantity because as I'm very well aware and you are too, when we are sick with a cold or whatever it may be, our sleep is very broken. We're waking up, coughing up crap. We're not able to get the quantity and duration of sleep that we need. So having two to three nights of your nutrition and your sleep is paramount. During this time frame, it's not that you shouldn't have any movement whatsoever. I would encourage you to get walks in. I would encourage you to do some light yoga, maybe getting some steps on the treadmill because it is freezing cold here in Ohio. I think it was four degrees when I let the dogs out this morning. So <laughs> outdoor walks, got to bundle up. But if you are able to have a, a treadmill at home or able to go to the gym, get some steps in there and, and be able to get that light movement in place. There is one caveat to getting back to your nutritional intake prior to being sick, and that is if you were in a calorie deficit at that time, it is going to be in your best interest to actually go to your calorie maintenance after having been sick because the stress on your body while being sick, fending off that illness and taxing your central nervous system was high, and you probably were eating less calories than you were prior to being sick during that time frame and so the calorie deficit over the you know week or two weeks is going to probably average out after being back at maintenance for the few days following and getting you back into a place where muscle glycogen is back replenished as well as your energy levels are in a better position because if you try to get right back into the calorie deficit you're just putting more stress on your body after coming out of a already very stressful situation and I'll share a little bit of my own personal experience. As I said, I came down with pneumonia. I was out of the gym for 14 days. I don't know the last time that I took 14 days off the gym. I was chomping at the bit. I was frustrated. I was very irritated at the fact of I would wake up and I'd be like, still can't train today. Don't feel up to it. And every night I would go to bed and I wish Sue was here to tell you guys this. I would go to bed and the last thing I said was, I'm going to be better tomorrow and I'm going to train tomorrow. And she'd be like, nah, I saw how you were today. That would be exponential progress for you to get back in the gym. And so 14 days of no training. And as I started to actually feel up to it, I spent those first three or four, I think it was, I think it was four days. I'm telling, I was not happy about this, but I knew that it was the best thing for my body to get my calories back in place. Over that 14 day period, and I really was sick for, we'll say six or seven of those particular days, I lost a lot of weight. And that was another tidbit. And this may be something that you experienced while you were sick, is that I lost around 14 pounds over the time of being sick, not fun. And I knew that for me to get back into the gym, I certainly needed to get my weight back up because as beautiful as it would be that those 14 pounds were all body fat and I just lost it very quickly, that's not what happened. I lost a lot of muscle glycogen and fluid that was being stored intramuscularly, which is very important for my overall training performance. And if my weight was going to stay down and I try to get back into the gym, one, my training performance was gonna be terrible, but two, I was probably going to prolong the time in which my body was not in an optimal state, you know, in the healthiest position possible possible. And so spending those three or four days, whatever it was at my caloric maintenance, and, and honestly, a little bit into a surplus was the best thing for me. And having that rest, even though I did not want to do it, I'm telling you, I had no interest in continuing to rest after the duration of time. I, my body did not feel great. I felt like I had lost all the muscle and which is not true, <laughs> but that's how I felt. And I am proud of myself for able being able to push through. And that first training session went significantly better because I gave myself that time to prioritize my sleep and prioritize getting all of my calories in before I got back in the gym. Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing? turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty. I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s able to grow their glutes 
with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program because you are awesome and I want you to have this program. I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. Now, what is the best way for us to get back into the gym? After we've done the the nourishing of our body and we've prioritized our sleep, we're in a position to actually get back into the gym. And I think that the first step is taking the pressure off of ourselves and ditching our current training protocols for the time being and following these three steps to get back into the gym. Because you may be chomping at the bit to get back into the gym, but also your body may be in a situation where you've spent a week cozied up on the couch, it's four degrees outside, and you've gotten out of the habit of getting up, getting to the gym, those different things, and it may be even challenging to get back into that routine. And so the first step I'm going to recommend is commit to your warm up, just 10 to 15 minutes, commit to going in and getting a solid warm up. Go through dynamic stretching, go through even some static stretching, move your body, getting inside the gym, and get a little bit of a sweat going. But that's all you have to commit to. You could do that 10 to 15 minute warm up and be done. Like if that's all you have the capacity for, that's totally fine. You're building momentum. And the next day when you're able to get into the gym, maybe you do a little bit more. Maybe you start to get into some exercises and do some warm up sets there. And you honestly may not have the ability to go through some working sets at that time. And that's also okay. Really, this is about building momentum and getting yourself back into the routine. My second recommendation is going to be quality over intensity. Now, I am going to recommend that you take this workout approach maybe the first week after being sick. If you were like myself and you were sick for two weeks or out of the gym for two weeks, you may want to do it for a little bit longer. Now, in that week's time frame, if you are going to be training one or two times, maybe even up to three sessions, so one to three sessions, I would encourage more of a full body approach to the exercises that you're selecting in those particular sessions. If you are going to be training up to four times, I would encourage more of a half body split, upper lower training sessions, anterior posterior. And the reason that I say this is that it allows for us to get a greater circulation of of blood flow. It's not going to be a lot of localized stress or inflammation on any particular part of our body because we're not going to have multiple exercises that are targeting one specific part of our body. And so the full body training or the half body training is going to be the best structure as we get the wheels turning and continue to build momentum. Your intention with these workouts is to move your body, to have great movement patterns, not to be setting PRs in the gym and going all out intensity. Allow for yourself to lighten the load that you would generally use for whatever rep range that you've decided, six, eight, 10, 12. The amount of repetitions is not really going to be a huge sticking point here. It's really just going to be a matter of, are we doing enough in the gym to move our body? And our goal by the end of the session is to feel good, to feel recharged, to feel like we have more energy than what we did when coming into the gym. It's not a goal of we should feel depleted and more run down because our body was just in this position of being extremely run down for however long you were sick. We want to feel energized from these sessions. And and that is going to really dictate the amount of work that you're doing per session. And so lighten the load, allow for yourself to focus on the execution. If you need to elongate the rest periods from what you would normally do, absolutely do that. And make sure that you are allowing yourself to um, stay hydrated and those different factors and being well-nourished going into those sessions. These things are going to be tremendously important and also 
nourishing your body following the training session is even going to be of greater significance than anything I've talked about here because we need to have that recovery to get back to your normal training after this time frame. My third recommendation is to skip the higher intensity work or conditioning that you may have been doing within your training previously. The reason for this is that it's going to be a greater stress on your body, as well as if the illness that you were dealing with was respiratory based, it's probably not in your best interest to try and really challenge that lung capacity right off the bat. You certainly can get back into that work when you are really at 100%, and this is going to be that momentum period where we're trying to get back into the swing of things. And so looking at it that way, that it's gonna be it's gonna be there after just a week here, but we've gotta be patient in working those things in. By following these steps, I've seen some really cool things happen for individuals who have always looked at movement and nutrition as more of of punishment, a a way for them to lose body fat or or because they ate too much, they have to go and, and run on the treadmill or go and work out. Transforming that perspective into something where they're more nourishing their body and they're feeling better leaving the gym and kind of unlocking that ability in their mind through this process is amazing. And it really allows for them to be in such a better position with nutrition and with their resistance training that they have even greater results following it because of this perspective change. I have a couple of good questions that you guys submitted around training after being sick, but before we dig into those, I would like to recap what we've talked about thus far in the episode. And so the first thing is listen to your body. There is no reason for us to rush back into the gym. If your illness is contagious, keep your ass out the gym. Ain't nobody want to be sick like you. As much as you don't want to be sick, the next person doesn't want to be sick as well. So stay out the gym until you are back to being healthy. Before getting back in, prioritize your hydration, nutrition, and sleep over rushing back into the gym. Eat to satiation and nourish your body after being sick. This is going to be around your calorie maintenance. And the last thing is the first week back into the gym, focus on full body or half body workouts with a lighter load and having a greater priority on quality movement patterns and feeling good leaving the gym. Our first listener question is, why is it so hard to work out after being sick? There's a couple of reasons why this is the case, and the first one is going to be that muscle glycogen is often depleted. The nutrients or resources that are needed to fend off a illness or virus are quite abundant. Like your body is utilizing calories or stored muscle glycogen to fend that illness off. And so when we are coming off of being sick, our body is often depleted and our body is also very smart. And so if we have an extended period of time out of the gym, it's going to take the resources that it had stored for those training sessions that you were having and use them elsewhere. It's very, very smart, much smarter than we are. And so when you're getting back into the gym, you're kind of signaling back to your body of, oh, I'm needing the resources to do this action, to contract during a bicep curl, to push the bar over my head. And as we're getting back into the swing of things, your body is going to push more of the resources that it has to where it's needed. And so the challenge of getting back into the gym and feeling weak is just a part of the process. And getting back in and and having a week or two weeks, you'll get back to where your strength was and and feeling like you're in the best place from your endurance and, and those different factors. The second listener's question is, can working out while sick or too soon after being sick make it worse? Yes, (laughs) yes, and the reason for this, as we've talked about through the episode, is that your central nervous system is going to be very challenged during the time of being sick. It's going to be ramped up. Think of this as kind of a a gauge here, and when our central nervous system is is redlined, we have to do everything in our power with, with what is in our control, our nourishment, our sleep, and those different factors to get our central nervous system back into a more operating position, more into a green zone, if you will. And if we are trying to also put more stress on our body by working out while we're sick, 
uh, we're just going to break the gauge. Our central nervous system is going to be extremely overly taxed, and we're just going to elongate the time frame in which we are sick. And if we try to get back into training too soon after our time of, of recovery, we're probably just going to push ourselves back. And a common question I like to raise with my clients who are trying to jump the gun after being sick and get back into the gym as soon as humanly possible is, do you enjoy having a 40 or 50% productive training session? And oftentimes they're like, no, this is it's stupid. It's a waste of time. It's like, that's what you are desiring to do by rushing your way back into the gym. I like to spend my time in the gym getting the most bang for my buck, getting 100% of what I need out of that session. And if I go into a session still sick or too early after being sick, I'm not going to get that. And so it's going to be in my best interest to continue to rest. And so looking at it from that lens, it's going to be better for you to have 80, 90, 100% quality of sessions after a, a time away from the gym where you're able to still control your nutrition, still control your, your day-to-day movement, still getting those things in place and have those 80 to 100% sessions rather than elongating the time of being sick and having these 40 to 50% quality sessions for maybe two weeks. And the final listener's question is, if I am sick for a week, did I lose muscle? <laughs> no, you did not. You did not lose muscle. And I know it may feel and look as though that you have lost muscle, but it is the muscle glycogen and the uh, fluid retention inside the muscle that has been lost. And so the, the bubbliness or the fullness to your muscle bellies has decreased. And so you feel a little bit noodly. You feel a little bit skinny fat. And after a few days of having your normal day-to-day -day intake in place, after a couple of training sessions, that fullness and muscular roundness is going to come back. And you're going to all of a sudden be like, oh, I gained all my muscle back. But in all actuality, you gained the resources necessary for your training performance to be at the best place that it can be. So that is what I have for you. I appreciate you guys asking those questions. Uh, thank you for tuning in to episode one. 150. I'm so proud that we got here. If you have not, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. We appreciate you abundantly and we'll see you in the next episode.